Hi everyone, welcome to Fanshawe's virtual open house. My name is Casey German and I work with the recruitment office at Fanshawe College. I'm going to be the host for tonight's session. Before we begin though, we do have a few minor housekeeping items just to go over. Audience webcams and mics have been turned off for the session. Uh, if you do have any questions though, please feel free to send them through the questions feature. There is a question mark that you can hit and you can type in your questions there. Following the session, we will leave time for those Q&A uh, that were submitted. Um, and if you have any questions after the session, maybe you want to connect with the recruiter to talk a little bit more about the college itself, you can do that by emailing the myfuture at fanshawe.ca email address that's on the screen. Uh, one last thing is if you have any extra programs that are open right now, it could compromise your experience with this webinar. So we do recommend that you take a minute and just close out any other programs that might be open before we start. So in saying that we are going to hear a session tonight about our CICE or community integration through, I'm blanking on the rest of the name, <laughs> community integration through, is it cooperative education? Uh, and we do have Robin Perkovic, the program coordinator with us tonight. So welcome to Robin. Thank you. Um, it's interesting to see what the, um, <laughs> The titles do. It said um, <laughs> the convict Frickovic <laughs> on the uh, subtitles there. So it usually mangles my name. Uh, welcome everybody. Um, it's really weird for me to do this without seeing faces and I can't even see myself. Uh, I'm used to doing these uh, sessions very interactively. So I'm glad you came tonight and looking forward to hearing some of your questions and um, welcoming you to Fanshawe. Um, so the CIC program is a two-year post-secondary certificate program. Students with developmental disabilities, acquired brain injuries, or other significant learning challenges are the students that um, apply to our program. I'm going to tell you right now everything that I'm talking about and on the slides is actually on our website as well and uh, so you can link that information so don't fret about taking notes or anything all this is on the website and also this will be recorded so um, the main thing with CICE is that students uh, that have been successful in high school receiving a certificate or a diploma have required curriculum modification in order to be successful. So they've had modified curriculum, either locally developed um, classes, maybe they've had a locally developed math or English, uh, but they have gotten a secondary school diploma, they would be considered um, uh, meet the criteria for the CIC program because they have been modified. Okay. Our supports in our program are learning facilitators. Right now we have a team of 16 learning facilitators that support the students inside uh, class. They are there to learn the content. So whether they sit with the student or not, it's up to the student. And they uh, tutor them outside of class in tutor sessions and labs. They also recommend the course modifications to meet the student's needs. So about three weeks after we've gotten to know the student a bit and understand their strengths um, and some of their challenges, then we modify the course um, learning outcomes and make the, uh, the request to the professor on they need to sign out, off on the outcomes. And we uh, it's very tailored to each student. It's not just, um, one uh, one size fits all by any means. That's why we have such a, a great team at, and students are very well supported. Um, we have a field placement coordinator who assesses and recruits the placements in the community that's suitable for each student. Um, our, we go about it a little differently uh, in high school. Often the placements are, are organized and then the students are put into the placements. We get to know our students and then our field placement coordinator goes out and finds a placement that suits that student. Okay, so we really focus on match, matching the student and the placement. Uh, it's not just filling a spot. Uh, we can be very creative with our placements as well. Uh, oftentimes we try to have the first placement on campus, but something like ECE, that would not be possible because we don't have any childcare facilities on campus. 
the field placement coordinator does uh, monitor and evaluate the students on placement and also provides any necessary training to the employers. But we really do expect employers to take on uh, the task of training as they would with any employee. Currently, we have five areas that uh, students are enrolled in and one early childhood education, recreation and leisure, which is could be like um, working on a cruise ship, could be working for the YMCA, working at uh, camps, uh, really at working at senior center. That's a big job market right now, uh, doing recreation and leisure activities with seniors. Um, so that's a big area. It's a very popular program because really the uh, amount of different kinds of jobs you could have in that uh, area is limitless. Um, photography is another area that we have students enrolled in, office administration, and culinary and hospitality. So that would be culinary and like hotel and restaurant um, hospitality. This is what the two-year map looks like for our students. The first semester, they take three CICE courses, um, skills for college success, preparation for field work, and technology for learning. Um, with each, uh, each student in, uh, in our program, they receive a Mac, MacBook as part of their um, uh, tuition. So it goes through OSAP. And um, so we take that first semester to train them on MacBook and all the things they can be doing with it to make their experience easier and be able to access all the um, accessibility software in the MacBook. And then they also take two courses in their area of interest. So if it's culinary, they'd have two culinary courses. Okay? They do need to choose one area because the classes build on each other each term. Um, second semester, they take one CICE course, which is self-awareness and advocacy. They do their first field placement, and then they have three courses in their area of interest. Okay, so their first field placement right now, we're doing virtual field placements, um, which are more course-centered, and they're getting a lot of uh, certificates and credentials through various um, career uh, service providers. So that's what's happening right now. Hopefully next fall, we will be back face to face because um, that's, <laughs> that's why I teach, to engage, not to um, talk to a screen, but uh, we'll see. So semester three, they take one CIC course, personal and professional independence, their sec second field placement, and then three more courses in their area of interest. And the fourth term, they are taking transition to community, which really is like transmission, transition to employment or volunteering, whatever people are, whatever path they're wanting to go to. Um, I will tell you, most of our students um, are seeking employment. I would say 95% of them are seeking employment, and we have an 85% employment rate at this time on our graduates, and that's based on the ones we've been able to track. Uh, I did ask for students to come tonight to be able to answer questions, but they're all working, so that's a good thing. Um, and then, of course, they take three courses in their area of interest again. Um, so these are the things that I focus on when I'm speaking with teachers and parents in regards to the skills that we're looking at um, applicants having when they come in. And these are just skills that we've compiled a list along with other colleges that have this program that are common amongst students that have been highly successful in the program. So having that ability to check and reply to emails, it sounds really simple, but just the ability to check twice a day, even once a day, okay? Because that's how the college communicates with students. So it's really important that we have um, that. This list of skills is on the website as well, using their telephone independently, verbal instruction. Uh, it is mandatory that students are capable of interacting with others and participating in group work. And I know sometimes that can be a challenge, as it is for everybody, whether you have a disability or not. However, that is a critical part of working um, out in whatever field you're choosing. And it's something that we really focus on those group work skills here. 
Um, we have zero tolerance for uh, inappropriate behavior because we do not have any staffing to um, handle that. Um, so acceptable behavior, we honestly have never had a problem with that. Um, independent, independent learning by preparing for classes or tutoring sessions, that's an important piece um, for students to realize that, you know, just because class is done, that doesn't mean you don't have um, homework to do. Uh, most of our homework is done in school which is perfect, that's the way we wanna do it because parents certainly don't need any more on their plate. Um, having the ability to understand and accept change and receive constructive feedback, these are things we work on, but these are things you can be working on every day with your students or your uh, son or daughter um, so that they are prepared when they come. Keeping scheduled appointments. If they're going to use the bus, you can do bus training. And apparently, London uh, Transit will uh, do bus training for people with um, disabilities. So that would be something you'd want to look at probably this, in the summer before um, attending. Hygiene, uh, understanding sex health, sexual health and relationships. You can sit in a classroom for at least 50 minutes. I'll be honest, I have a hard time sitting in a classroom for 50 minutes. Um, so what we mean there is the ability to focus for an extended period of time. But honestly, if students need to get up and take a break, whatever, they can get up, go get a drink of water, go to the washroom, whatever. It's not, it's not a mandatory thing. Um, and even if they need to just stand at the back of the class, it helps them focus better, that's fine. We can work with that. Um, the other thing is having uh, some experience doing homework and projects is also a good thing because we do ask them about that in the interview, uh, ask them to talk to us about what things they've done in school. Um, for admission requirements, an Ontario Secondary School Diploma or Certificate or be at least 19 years of age, and then you're um, admitted under the mature um, student criteria. You will, like I said, have to demonstrate academic needs that require curriculum modification to succeed. If you need longer test times, if you need someone to write notes for you, but the content itself you can get through, um, we have those supports already at the college through accessibility services. So that is not a modification. That's what's called an accommodation. And uh, we already offer that. So you would be able to go into the regular program and get accommodations and to have the longer test time and the scribe or if you need to take tests verbally or whatever. Um, so that and then you would get a um, diploma in that program. This is a certificate program, so it is not the same as a diploma, okay? Um, so I encourage students, if they don't need modifications, they need to be in the regular program, okay? And obviously demonstrating a level of independence, not requiring constant supervision, because we um, are not with the students all the time on campus, we're with them during class, and we do, when we're typically on campus, we do have an office that has a lounge area in it that some students like to hang out in. Uh, ideally, we want students just to be in the college doing their thing. And a lot of our students will meet friends in their classes um, that are integrated. So all their areas of interest are integrated courses and the CEs, CICE classes are segregated. So those are just for CIC students. And I teach those, and Carmen Hall, who is a, another teacher, she teaches the tech course. Okay, you'll need to complete two advocate reference forms. So somebody that's taught the applicant, so it can't be a friend or a family member. Um, a resume, willingness to participate fully in the program. If we're interviewing someone and they say that they're just there because their mom told them they had to be, um, that's probably not gonna help them in their interview. Uh, so we want people to be here because they want to be here. We only have a select uh, amount of positions, 15 each September, so they are pretty, um, pretty special positions. If the person um, is selected, they will in independently need to attend an interview with the, with the panel, which is usually myself and one of our learning facilitators. So how do I apply? You can go online to OCAS. 
um, which if you just type OCAS into your web browser, the site will come up. Okay, and OCAS, I believe, is open now for applications for next fall. And once Fanshawe receives your electronic application, we get a notice and we will email you a package with information on all the next steps in the process. We're a little different than other programs because we do have the two references. So it's quite an in-depth reference um, sheet uh, questionnaire for your references to fill out. Um, so we send all that out and then it'll be given a timeline for you. Um, we do have the same requirements as all the other programs, as in anything received by February 1st, receives first consideration. Okay. Um, if you want to try out college before you apply, unfortunately, we're not able to do it this term. Uh, next term, we're online as well. So, uh, but typically, if you're looking down the road, if you're not thinking for this September, uh, we have what's called shadow days where three to four students can attend and they shadow students for the day so they get a day in the life of a CIC student and uh, up to two staff members can also attend that day. We like EAs and teachers to come and see what the students, how they're supported, what we do support and what we don't support, um, but we do separate the EAs and the teachers from those students that day because we want them to experience it as a student. Um, and not being supervised with a teacher. Um, so they get to experience classes, tutor sessions, and they usually have lunch with the CIC students and staff. It's usually a very popular day for everybody. Um, if you're interested in that, like I said, unfortunately, we won't be having that next term. But if you are looking down the line at that, you can contact Laura Castilla, who is our administrative support officer, and you can contact her there and she will put your name on a list because they do get filled up quite quickly once we do have them. For more information, you can contact these um, uh, emails here. This is our program email that Laura uh, is in charge of, and then this is her uh, direct email. She checks both every day. This is the link to all the information I've just given you. Okay, so if you go on to Fanshawe College, and click on full-time programs and find the CI Community Integration Through Cooperative Education Program, you will find that um, link and it will, all the tabs at the top will give you all the information I just gave you. So typically this is an hour long session, but I've managed to do it in, it looks like 17 minutes. So I'm quite proud of myself. And now I think we'll go to any questions. Okay, thank you so much again, Robin Furkovic from the Community Integration Through Cooperative Education Program for giving us such insightful information about this program. I know it is quite popular, so it's a, wonderful to be able to have you give a little bit more in depth. We do want to take some questions, so if you do want to send us a question, please just hit the question mark on the uh, browser or your control panel that's on the right hand side and we'll go through those. Um, we do have some that we'll start with here. So uh, first one we're gonna ask is, what if I haven't been in school for a number of years and I'm not able to use a teacher for a reference? Good question. Um, then you can use someone that has provided support to you. So whether if you've had a support worker that uh, works with you on life skills or leisure skills, uh, takes you to leisure program, someone who has been involved with you in a support role that is not a parent or a friend. So it could be a, a DSW or a PSW, a support worker of some sort. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Another question. Can I apply for OSAP if I currently get ODSP? Yes, you can. OSAP, um, and you can apply for OSAP even before you apply to college um to see because it can take some time to get processed through uh so we encourage people if you're planning on uh attending in the fall that go ahead and get your uh osap funding papers through quickly uh and the of course the sooner you get them through the faster they get processed it seems um the the um odsp will is it's paying for things like your um your uh, room and board. So if 
OSAP will not pay for your room and board because you're already getting it from ODSP. So you, it's like double dipping, but OSAP will pay for your tuition and it will pay for um, the books. And uh, in our case, it pays for the um, MacBook as well. So, okay. yeah. Another question that came in here. Uh, will I have support in residence if I choose to live in residence? Currently, we do not have support in residence. We do have students living in residence and we do have students right now actually living in residence because they wanted the college experience even though we're online and that's great. Um, but we do not have support in residence. We are looking at trying to get some even peer support uh, figured out like a best buddies uh, sort of situation where we can have students that are living in residence and, and pair them up with students. But right now we can't really do anything about that. So that's something that we want to uh, have in the future. Okay, great. That's a great thing to know. Uh, another question that we have, what happens if you're accepted, you start attending classes and you or the staff realize that you can't manage the course? Okay, so in that case, when you're saying can't manage the course, um, we've not had that problem except with computer coding because you cannot modify computer coding. Um, but Typically what we do is we take the, the courses that we're, our students are in now. We've had students in for a number of years. We're into our sixth intake now. So uh, in that case, we modify the course for that student's level. If, for example, someone says, I don't want to do this anymore. I just don't want to do this program anymore. I don't want to be in school. I didn't realize it was going to be so much work then you can go through the withdrawal process. Okay. But otherwise, um, we've never had a student not be able to do the course because we, we uh, modify it to each student's level. We may have someone go into like business administration, or sorry, office administration, and then they go, oh, I really, it's not what I thought it was. I don't like this. I want to do, you know, I want, I'd rather work at the front desk of a hotel or something. So in that case, after the first term, they are allowed to switch if they can. The, we don't like them to switch after that because they miss too much content in the first two terms. They would only, they're here for two years, whether they switch or not, right? So that's all the funding is good for. That's the government mandate. Okay. Uh, another question. Uh, how do I know if I have a modified curriculum in high school? Good question. So the best way to do that is to contact, if you've been in the school, like if you're coming straight from school, you can just contact the uh, guidance counselor at the school. If you've been out of school for a while, you can contact the guidance office of that school and ask if you are on any type of modified curriculum. If you've come out of a special education program where you were in a segregated classroom, my guess is you are probably on a modified curriculum. If you were in an integrated classroom, but you had different work, or you were in an integrated classroom and you were pulled out for locally developed math or English or science, then that is modified. Locally developed is already modified from the provincial curriculum, so that would qualify. So the guidance office is the best place to start. They can look up the transcript and see if they were on a modified uh, curriculum or not. Okay, so I think we'll have time for one last question here. So it, it's a great question to ask. So I graduated from high school with a diploma and have a learning disability. I didn't need modifications to complete the work in high school, but needed extra time and took their, my test verbally. I'm nervous about going to college. So would the CICE program be a good way to ease my way into college and then go into uh, a career program in college? That's, that's a good question. Um, no, it would not uh, because you didn't require modifications in high school. So I think I mentioned earlier that the, um, the criteria is you have to require those modifications. That's why um, these spots are so precious. Uh, you, if you didn't need modifications 
and you have a learning disability and you need that verbal testing or a scribe or additional time, whatever it is, the college can support that already in the regular program and it can support it with um, using, they have note takers, they have tutors, they have a testing center where people can give you your tests verbally and record for you. Um, so all those things are in place for any student with a learning disability because there are a lot of students that have learning disabilities. So the college supports that already and that's already part of your tuition. And so the CIC program would not be a good uh, place to start. You could look at something like a foundation program. We have what's called a human service foundation program. It's a year long certificate program. And that is a nice program. It has some pretty nice basic foundational um, courses in it for people that are interested in going into the helping field. Um, so that might be something. It's not as rigorous of a curriculum as the career programs are, but no, a learning disability would not qualify you to come into the program if you aren't requiring um, modifications. Okay, and we did actually have one question come in under the wire. Do you need a copy of an IEP as part of the uh, application and everything? No, we do not need a copy of the IEP. No. Okay. Well, that's what, plain and simple. <laughs> yeah, I, I just let me add something real quick to that. Um, we don't need a copy of the IEP. Typically, the questions we're asking in that um, uh, reference form, it addresses a lot of the things in the IEP as far as amounts, amount of support, what were some goals and things like that. So if you have a teacher or an EA fill that out, uh, we definitely get the information that we're needing. So that's why we don't need an IEP. Okay, great. Well, looks like we are reaching the end of our session. So thank you everyone who has attended and submitted questions today. Hopefully we were able to answer everything that you wanted to know about the CICE program. If you think of any more questions that come up after, please connect with Fanshawe. There are the websites and emails on the screen there for you. You can jot those down. But also if you have any other questions, you can always reach out to myfuture at fanshawe.ca and you can always book appointments with our team as well. So thank you again for joining us tonight. And I thank again Robin Ferkovic for joining us tonight and taking the time. And I hope everybody enjoys the rest of their open house. Thanks. Am I still on or can I can I add something? Yeah, you sure can. Yep. Okay. We're actually doing a, a student panel um, on the 23rd of November. Uh, and it is at 3 to 3:30. So we will have some CICE students, current some current students that are in school right now with us on that panel if you wanted to come and sometimes students would rather ask students questions than you know uh, the teacher so uh, if you want you can attend that and it will be the same sort of um, process I, I from what I understand anyways this is all new to me but uh, <laughs> so that's the 23rd of November from 3 to 3 30. Excellent thank you that's a great option all right and with that we come to a close. So thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. Thanks.